I have lived in Nigeria's federal capital, Abuja, since 1993. And like many other city residents, I have grown to become accustomed to the language of government and the typical sentiments and thinking that dominate social discourse in the capital city of Africa's largest economy. From the days of the military and up till the last government, the narrative and the resultant behaviors and consequences remain the same. With each new change in government, all we hear about are the new big boys coming into town, buying up property, driving property prices to the skies, and issuing contracts to the new cabal of friends of the new government. We even know about the people who have become renowned for being relevant in every successive administration. They are referred to as any government in power, Ajip, and have developed a penchant for being able to weather the storm of change regardless of political affiliations. Well, this storm of change is different and most of them have caught a fever. We have become accustomed also to the pomp and pageantry associated with corrupt and wasteful public servants. We have even had to accommodate the recklessness of their children spinning cars from the ministerial fleets and the stories of their newfound Abuja concubines, and most significantly, how levels have changed. We have also become used to ministers, permanent secretaries, and DGs of government agencies that bestrode the city like colossuses, siren blaring, long convoys of vehicles, and a reputation for making big speeches and promises on the airwaves, backed only by more corruption and looting. Enter June 2015 to date, and the narrative has completely changed. You see, for those political opportunists that have relocated from other parts of the country to have their levels change in this new political dispensation, they have been utterly disappointed. Their first reaction was, Baba go slow, complaining that the president was too slow. This slowly fizzled away, and now fear and caution are the reality as things are set to change in, in the society. For many who are new to the city, they would have preferred to come to Abuja earlier, you know, in the years when things were rosy under previous administrations that supported the opportunistic exploitations that they are looking for. The anti-corruption crusades that the president promised have left many in dire straits. The initial narrative of a witch hunt has slowly faded away as Nigerians and the entire international community are alarmed at the colossal, atrocious, and mind boggling stealing that has been going on in this city and in this country. On the issue of witch hunts, I believe that people who are truly innocent of any corruption should have nothing to be worried about. Using the historical reference of witch hunts, it is either you are a witch or you are not. And if you are indeed a witch and the documents as the president referred to them at the presidential media chat are there to prove it, then let's move on from describing it as a witch hunt and arrive at the medieval tradition of burning the witches at the stake. The truth about these so-called witch hunts is that they typically open a can of worms and every bone's backside. So I urge those who have indicting documents against some of the members of this administration that are corrupt to please bring out their documents. The more witches that get burnt, 
ultimately the better for Nigeria and the poor masses of this country. If for anything else, the soap opera and comic relief from swallowing evidence to other shenanigans that are taking place adds flavor to the gloom of a hard-biting economy and recession. One aspect of the narrative that has also changed is how we have scandalized our children and our youth with all of these shameful actions and revelations. Listening to the news and conversations at home have created a new language for our children that is completely unprecedented. During one of our interactive Sunday mass homilies in our chapel in Apo, a nine-year-old child got up to describe the challenges of our country. Stealing, looting, corruption, greed, she said, as we all applauded the depth of her response. The priest quickly reminded us that most adults in this generation never knew of such words when we were nine years old. We have exposed our children and our youth to a very rotten and spoilt Nigeria, and one can only imagine how their early exposure to this mess will influence them in future. Hopefully for good, but possibly for bad. Only time will tell. Someone analyzed the drama of bad government in Nigeria over the years that our children have had to witness and the hope in the future generation as a playing a pornographic movie for your kids and expecting them to remain pure. To that commentator, we have long mortgaged our future. And perhaps, if there is any hope, it will lie in children who were less than three years old as at May 2015. So, my dear friends, the narrative has indeed changed. People are no longer so excited about taking up government appointments. After all, if everyone focused on the markup of 30% available on public procurements, that profit margin will be more than enough to keep, take care of ourselves. We finally have a president who openly admits that his people are desperately poor, unrepentantly corrupt, and that our economy is weak. Things that were unspeakable in the past from sit-in Nigerian leaders. Bankers are no longer carrying around large sacks to distribute around town. Monies are no longer being washed from one bank account to the other. The days of public sector deposits and interest rate arrangements between directors of finance and bank managers are over. And finally, finally, government ministers are quiet, focused on doing their jobs and not flaunting their feathers like peacocks around the city. While the unfolding story of the new administration is not yet over and has been plagued by a number of its own mistakes, budget gate, naira gate, and so on, at least we are rest assured that the big issue of corruption and the latrine culture that was pervasive in the past are gone, or at least gone for now. Residents of Abuja and other parts of Nigeria are now looking to be more positively innovative in contributing to meaningful economic growth. Unfortunately, some of these innovative ideas cannot receive the financing they need because the money bags are who are not accustomed to investing in real businesses, preferring contracts, crude lifting, and property speculation, or some of those money bags are too afraid of getting caught when the real source of their investment capital is linked to corruption. So, for some of us who never got to be maggots enjoying the dirty latrine of what used to be our country, nothing has changed. We are still not enjoying, although we remain hopeful that things will get better as our toilet gets cleaner and the maggot infestation is destroyed.